guys, so this is going to be a pretty short, impromptu video. Um, welcome. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about one of my newer pet reptiles. Uh, her name is Gary. So Gary uh, is named after my husband's friend. And as uh, it, this lizard gets a little bigger, I'm thinking it's probably a female. Uh, I don't know for sure. Um, but the name is Gary. Sometimes I refer to the lizard as a him, sometimes as a her. Uh, I'll know for sure once it gets bigger. And that is because this particular species of lizard is uh, sexually dimorphic which means that the males and the females look a little different in certain ways. Um, so anyways, Gary is a frilled dragon or frilled lizard, uh, the Indonesian variety, um, which is what you most commonly find in the pet trade. The vast majority of the ones in the pet trade are um, farm bred. So they're basically kept outdoors in the natural environment, but on private pieces of property and raised that way, and then imported for sales. Uh, some of them are starting to be more captive bred, which I would highly recommend. Um, I was told this little one was captive bred. I don't know if I believe that or not. Um, so we've done a course of dewormer just to be safe. Um, but this has been a really, really rewarding little lizard to take care of. Uh, he's already learning that I am the bringer of food um, and I'm not something to be super scared of or anything like that. Uh, so we're, we're already starting to build a lot of trust. Um, super cool lizard, uh, one of my dream species. Um, so I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of my daily interactions with him. I feed him generally about three times a day. Um, and that is as he gets older, he'll need to eat less frequently, but for babies and juveniles, you definitely want to feed them at least twice, if not three or four times a day. Um, so he's, a little chunker growing quick and currently in shed which is all a good sign so here he is okay so this is Gary this is his home that he lives in right here uh, let me back up see if you can see it good here um, it is a bioactive vivarium so there's a drainage layer underneath the soil separated by screen mesh um, and then soil layer and top leaf litter and there's little insects that live in there um, to help break down waste and everything like that. Um, I've got a couple live plants. Most of the plants in here though are fake ones um, just because he is pretty harsh on them. Uh, just running around and moving through the enclosure and things like that. Um, rock water bowl down there, lots of perches. These guys are more boreal, so they're found um, up higher, especially the juveniles like to be up high. He loves the cork bark um, and likes to sit on that underneath his basking light. He's got a basking spot that's right about 115 to 120 degrees at the very hottest, and then he can move away from that um, down to 90 and as low as 78 to 80 degrees, um, the farther he gets away from that. And then a uh, tube style UVB light up there. So this little guy will definitely need a bigger cage as he grows. He's already grown just in the few weeks that I've had him. Um, but I want to show you guys, if I can, some of the bonding and things that we've been doing. He's got a little bit of shed on his head, a little bit coming off on his tail, so he looks a little duller than normal, um, but still a really cute little guy. Yes, hi Gary. Very inquisitive, very interested, always looking, watching, super neat. So I have 
some black soldier fly larvae here, and I'm gonna see if he'll come out um, onto my arm to eat some here. So it's really about being super patient and not making quick startling movements. He's still young, um, so it does take a while to teach them that, you know, you're not gonna hurt them at all, but he's learning super quick and he keeps looking down at the bowl because he always wants more food. Um, this guy eats a ton. Uh, he eats all sorts of insects. I feed him a variety um, and he really likes the food. So that's what he wants more than anything. Huh? Yeah. You ready to go back? Go ahead. Good boy. And now he'll just bask there and hang out and that's pretty much what he does. Sometimes I find him down below. Um, he'll take a little dip in his water bowl every now and again. Um, and sometimes he's perched way up at the top. He's got this uh, fake bark cork background that he can climb all over to. Um, and dark kind of hiding spaces down behind everything. Um, but he's pretty much always out in the open now. He learned that... I am a good person, so he runs out whenever I come in here and he'll look at me and beg for food now. Um, just overall, really fun to interact with, uh, super cute and a really fun species to keep. Um, they're not the easiest in the world and when they get to be adults, they do need like a three foot by four foot enclosure, um, which is something to seriously consider. Um, also, like I said, there aren't a lot of captive bred animals available, uh, so that makes it trickier too. So not a pet that I would necessarily recommend for everyone, um, but definitely, if you've done the research, I can see why you too might decide that this would be a really, really fun, really cool pet to have, um, just like I did. So I love him a lot, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please hit like and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate the continued support, and I'll keep putting out videos. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe out there. Thank you.